Aloha and welcome to the CS415 video on how your shell lab should work. If you notice I'm working in the shell lab folder, this should be the same folder that you did in your learn C. And you should just continue on with your main C file. Of course, you could upgrade it to C++ if you want to, but I don't think you'll gain a lot out of it. But I'm going to go ahead and run my shell lab to show you what it looks like, uh, a successful shell lab looks like. So you can see I'm printing out the current working directory in my uh, shell, and then I have a prompt, and I use three dollar signs just to make sure I don't get confused with the normal shell or terminal window that we're working in. And then we can test the echo command. Hello, how are you? And we could see that whatever we put here gets printed out there. Next, we can, I'll test that exit command at the end. Next, we can test the make directory command. And so I'm gonna make a cheese uh, directory. And uh, we can CD into the cheese directory. And uh, you can see that the cheese directory showed up over here. So that means that's working right. And then we'll go ahead and make another directory called uh, Brie. And um, you can see inside of here that we have that Brie folder. Now if I cd dot dot and I try to remove the cheese directory, it's going to give me an error message saying the directory is not empty. So um, I could go cd and if I misspell cheese, you can see it gives me a nice error message there. So then I'll go uh, cd to uh, the right name of the folder. I'll remove the Brie directory, come back, remove the cheese directory. Um, R R M dir cheese, okay. And now, um, so I've tested the make directory, the remove directory. I still need to test the ls command. So um, ls, you uh, should list out all of the files in your current folder. And um, you could also go ls and the name of another folder um, that lists out the, the um, files in the test folder. So um, ls will be kind of one command that can have zero parameters. And that means list out the files in the current directory, and then if you add a argument on the ls, then it uses that as the folder to list the files out as. And last, we'll test launching up a new process. So I created this new test folder in inside of my shell lab, and in my test folder, I downloaded the test.cpp file, and um, the easiest way is just to create a new file here, name it test.cpp, and copy and paste it in. Now um, we can cd into the test folder. Now this part is optional, but it should work if everything is working right. I can go gcc to compile my test.cpp. Now that's um, it's going to be g++ because that's a c++ file. And you can see that it compiled it. And now I have an a dot out. Now you can tell what this program does. It just takes in arguments and prints them out with asterisks on both sides of them. So if I go dot slash a dot out, hello class, how are you? You can see that we have the a dot out, hello class, how are you printed out on that line. And um, then we're gonna go ahead and try to redirect our output. So I'll do dot slash a dot out, hello class, how are you? And I'm gonna just put that out into out dot text. And you can see I got no output, but now I have this out dot text. And, um, and if you look at it, and I, that's because I, the error message is because I did a, a test before, you can see that we have all the arguments printed out inside of that file. Now the last command to test is just the exit command and that should exit the shell and go back to your terminal window. Now just a little uh, little thing on this uh, thing, that's, that's to redirect the output. So if we um, run a program 
and we don't want the output going to our terminal display, we can redirect it into a file just like this. And these are just commands that the Linux uh, shell uh, does. So um, we have the out.txt, we can view that again. And by the way, cat is one way that print out the contents of a file. It's short for concatenate, but it also allows you to print out the contents of a file. So um, we have that. And then um, we can also uh, direct, if we have a program that takes in input, we can also direct, uh, we can have our input, whatever we want to input into the program in a text file, and we can uh, replace the keyboard input with the input of the text file. Now, another thing that we can do is we could take the output of one program and we can use a bar, and it's called a pipe, and we can pipe it in as input to the next. Uh, executable a program that we want to run. So let me show you an example of that. That's PS. Um, PS lists out all of our current processes. And PS A says for all of them, capital A. So we have quite a lot of processes uh, running here on my machine. And let's just say, you know what, I only want to know the SSHD process. So that, that's all I want to say. So there is another program called grep, which is short for regular expression. So it'll help filter out my output. So I could go ps-a, pipe that output into the input for grep, and only show me the ones that have SS, the lines that have SSH on them. And you can see that the SSHD is right there. Now, the input uh, command is not required. This, uh, and this pipe is not required for the shell lab but the output is, so you need to implement this, but you don't have to implement the input nor the pipe in your program, but I just want to show you that those are some things that you can do on a real shell.